Singing News Magazine is pleased to partner with Child Fund International to present the 2020 Singing News Fan Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome your hosts for the Singing News Fan Awards, Lauren Talley and Tim Lovelace. Welcome to the 2020 Singing News Fan Awards. And as uh, strange a year as this has been, we've got a lot to be excited about today. We've got a lot to celebrate. We have the greatest message in the world sung by some of the greatest talent in the world. Yeah. And we're here to celebrate that today. And you know what? Uh, everybody's talking about what's wrong with 2020, but here's what is right about 2020. Jesus came out of the tomb Amen. and he's still alive. Yeah. A lot of the folks that have helped us keep gospel music in your homes and in your vehicles this year, we're going to honor with our very first award for the favorite Southern Gospel radio station. And the nominees are... KWFC, Springfield, Missouri. WBTG, Sheffield, Alabama. WHQA, Piedmont, South Carolina. WJBZ, Knoxville, Tennessee. And WXRI, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And the winner is... Hey, do that thing you did a second ago. Ooh. WJBZ, Knoxville, Tennessee. I'll tell you, God is good. May I tell you, I'm Dan Bell. I'm music director, afternoon DJ for almost five years now. Station started, uh, started almost 30 years ago by J. Basil Mull. And if you don't know that name, you should visit the Gospel Music Hall of Fame and look for the display about him. We, well, I can't, uh, I can't think of everybody. That's started with a DJ named Mike in the morning who's been there 22 years led by our station manager, Jamie Lewis, and owners who took over just about five years ago, but still want to carry on the message of Jesus. I just have one more thing to say. If you've got a copy of the national anthem sung by you, if you're a Southern Gospel artist, please send it to me. While some are protesting, we're promoting the national anthem. Play it every day at noon, and we need more copies. God is good. Thank you so much for those who voted. If you didn't vote, that's okay. Check us out while you're here, 96.3. Or if you don't have gospel where you live, praise963.com. Thank you again. God bless you. And God bless America. Congratulations, WJBZ. And, and this next category, I love it because uh, everybody wonder uh, what's going to happen generation to generation, and uh, gospel music is in great hands. And this award is going to be going to the favorite new artist. And the first, uh, uh, first group nominated, the Three Heath Brothers. 
the Jordan Family Band, the Kramers, Sunday Drive, and the Sound. And the winner is Lauren. The Three Heath Brothers. Wow, that was unexpected. Thank you guys so much. We want to say thank you to God, first of all, because he is the reason why we're here. We just want to glorify and praise him. Second of all, we want to thank our parents for taking the time to invest in us. And we also want to thank our mentor and friend, Roger Talley. And we also want to thank our record label who just signed us this past year, Crossroads and Horizon Records. And we want to thank all of you who voted for us, our friends. You guys mean so much love. You guys mean so much to us. And we love singing to you guys and to you artists who we, you know, we're completely new at this and you guys have given us so much love and advice and kindness. Thank you guys so much. You won't find three sweeter boys than those boys right there. They are just fantastic. Hey, can I have that card that you stole from me a minute ago? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> no, that's not the one I need. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, our <laughs> Okay. Our first presenter uh, made his first appearance on the Singing News Fan Award stage in the early 1990s as a Fan Award boy, helping the winners on and off the stage. He's the lead vocalist of the Mark Trammell Quartet now, and he is one of Singing News' newest columnists, writing lasting impressions. How about a nice hand for Nick Trammell. All that to say, Danny Jones has given me a lot of very cool opportunities in my lifetime, so thank you, Danny, for, for that. Um, the first award that I'm going to give away today is for the favorite soloist. And I think to be a good soloist in this industry, you need two qualities. Number one, you need to be a good singer, of course. Number two, you need to be a good communicator. And those are two very different things. And I think all of these uh, guys are top notch when it comes to that. The nominees for favorite soloist are Mark Bishop, <laughs> Riley Harrison Clark, <laughs> Joseph Habedank, <laughs> Ivan Parker, and David Phelps. And the winner is Joseph Habedank. Thank you all so much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I know there's a lot of you that are curious as to why uh, me and Scotty are not hosting with Connie again this year. And the reason is because uh, we were not allowed because of Scotty's hair. Um, <laughs> looks like he got in a fight with a lawnmower and lost, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, <laughs> I think uh, Lauren and uh, Tim are doing a great job. I just want to say thank you so much. The other night on Tuesday night, I kind of had a, a rough night and uh, I came off stage and I was having a pity party and the bad thing about pity parties is usually nobody's invited except for you and I, I remember uh, coming off stage and going to the product table and you all were so kind and so gracious to me and you didn't say anything about uh, my voice and so I'm, I'm so grateful for every time we come to the table when you encourage me and I want you to know um, that gospel music um, is I love this so much this is my favorite week of the year I love being here I love being a part of this I'm just so humbled and grateful that I get to be a part of it. And um, I hope that uh, you all will rest assured that gospel music is in good hands and that we are going to preserve this music. We love this music, 
and I want to thank you for believing in our ministry. I also want to thank my wife, Lindsay. I love her so much, and she has built our ministry from the ground up, and um, I'm just, she's done it from behind the scenes, and Lindsay, I love you so, so much, and she is still the best kisser. God bless you. Oh, boy. Okay. The next award that I'm going to give is the favorite musician. And Danny told us, gave us no script, and he said to just say what we wanted to about these categories. And I have to say, I feel like our industry has the most underrated musicians in any genre of music. And I would put the guys on stage right now up against any secular band in the world, and they could hold. <laughs> Oh, the nominees for favorite musician are Kim Collingsworth, Gordon Moat, Andy Stringfield, Josh Townsend, and Gerald Wolf. And the winner is Kim Collingsworth. Thank you all very, very much. I never take this lightly. Um, I cannot say thank you to all of you enough. Singing News, thank you for putting this on and going through all of the hoops during COVID to even make this possible. In May, when we came off the road, I've got 45 seconds, by the way, and I'm down to 35, so hold tight. In <laughs> In May, when we came off the road, the Lord gave me this verse, and I've hung, to, hung on to it the entire time. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for we know that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. So whether we're sitting at home on furlough or we're here and get to come in this way as we do this week, don't be discouraged, all my artist friends. We've got to lock arms and be steadfast because your labor and our labors will never be in vain as long as they're done for Jesus Christ. Thank you all again. Singing the first of our top five nominated songs come Sunday morning. Make welcome the old pads. Great job, Old Paths. Now our next presenter is carrying on the legacy that his father, Mr. James Blackwood, started so many years ago, and he has done such a great job carrying on that legacy. He uh, writes a monthly article in the Singing News. It's called Thoughts for Everyday Living, and I love trivia. Here's a little trivia. Uh, uh, this presenter used to play drums in a band that would open shows for Elvis Presley. ever meet gospel music. What about it? Mr. Billy Blackwood. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Good afternoon. It's such an honor to be able to be here today and present these awards to uh, fine recipients. The, I get to present the favorite gospel uh, trio, Southern Gospel Trio, and the nominees are the Booth Brothers, Brian Free and Assurance, Greater Vision, Jeff and Sherry Easter, and the Wisnets. And the winner is, they didn't tell you they printed these upside down, did they? Greater Vision.
That is the, uh, that is the uh, music for the song, You've Arrived. And uh, the writers are here today, so that's really thrilling. John, come up here, and I'm, I want you to uh, say thanks for this, and you hold it, all right? All right. <laughs> all right, well, th uh, thanks to the Lord. Obviously, that sounds cliche, but we really mean it. He's the reason we do all this. Thanks to Danny Jones, Rick Francis, everybody at Singing News. Thank you to all of our gospel music family, Greater Vision family that voted for us. You mean so much to us. And thank you, most of all, to our wives uh, who, make the, who have made the unspeakable sacrifice uh, Tiffany, Kim, Donna, Regina, of having us not leave the house for five months this year. Uh, you're the heroes. So, thank you. Congratulations, Greater Vision. And now for the award for the favorite Southern Gospel band. The nominees are Dixie Echoes, Gaither Vocal Band, Isaacs, Kingdom Heirs, and the Primitives. And the winner is Kingdom Heirs Band. Yeah. Well, it's taken me 30 years, but I finally got rid of every other one of them. <laughs> I am now the kingdom heir. <laughs> yeah, baby. Hey, listen. Hey, thank you so much, guys. This never, I tell you, man, I'd never dreamed in my wildest imagination when I was growing up playing drums and traveling in a van in West Virginia that uh, I'd be standing here today. 12 times band of the year. Thank you so much. That means so much to us. And uh, I'm sure if Andy and Chris were here, they would thank me. And uh, <laughs> hey, now let me tell you the situation here. Dolly, with the scheduling that's been going on, the conflict in schedule, and uh, hush, Josh. Uh, Dollywood had us scheduled today for four shows. So I got up this morning, I went in and done one show. The other guys are over there grinding it out. Three more shows today. So I don't know if you know this or not, but at Dollywood, we, the Kingdom Airs, are essential workers. <laughs> uh, well, well, I guess most of them are. I'm here. But uh, anyway, uh, also, um, Something else I wanted to say, most of you groups in here, most of you, uh, a lot of friends in here, you all were canceled at Dollywood in October. Just unfortunate situation. So we are there carrying the torch at Dollywood, telling people from all over the world about Jesus Christ. And uh, that is our, we're like missionaries that stay at home. Hey, by the way, my son-in-law, my brand new son-in-law is a police officer. Support your local police, support your firefighters. <laughs> We can't do it without them, guys. Thank you so much. God bless you. Really appreciate this right here. Thank you. Congratulations, Kingdom Mayor's Band. And now to sing another uh, top five nominated song going there. Please welcome my good buddies, Triumphant. I hope they do an energetic song the next time. But anyway, <laughs> triumphant. That was great. It was neat to see from up here all the lights out there. I was going to pull mine out, but my flip phone, the, batter, uh, flip phone, the battery's low. Anyway, uh, um, uh, this next presenter is uh, not only a, uh, a great singer, but he's an award-winning songwriter. Uh, he has, uh, does a monthly article in Singing News Magazine called Grateful Eyes. 
And um, here's a little trivia. Once again, I love trivia. He was so bashful as a child, this is the truth, that although he loved singing, he wouldn't go on the stage, and his dad was all the time singing. He wouldn't go on the stage until he was at least 16 because he was so scared, stage fright. And, uh, well, all I can say is he's been delivered. <laughs> so, mate, welcome to the stage. He was just up here, the baritone singer for Triumphant, Scotty Inman. Come on. I need some water. Um, hey, uh, it's, hey it's, it's good to be back up here again this year. I miss being with Connie Hopper. Okay, um, I get the awesome opportunity to announce the top five nominees for favorite alto of the year, and the nominees are Sherry Easter, Jeff and Sherry Easter, Connie Hopper of the Hoppers, Courtney Metz of the Collingsworth family, Libby Stuffel of the Perrys, and Susan Wisnett of the Wisnets. And the winner of the 2020 Favorite Alto of the Year is Connie Hopper. I still like your hair. <laughs> I told you last year I can't believe that I'm getting this. <laughs> I really can't. Singing gospel music's been a wonderful thing in my life, and I've it's been so many there are so many great singers here, so many young singers. And I want to encourage them, but I want to thank you. I want you to I want to thank everybody that voted for me. I want to thank the Singing News for what they do. And uh, I want to thank the Lord. I praise his name this afternoon. And I just want to thank Scotty, too, okay? <laughs> thank you so very much, and God bless you. Give one more hand to the Queen, Connie Hopper. No nicer person I love her to death. Um, the top five nominees for, for favorite soprano of the year are Brooklyn Blair of the Collingsworth family, <laughs> Melissa Brady of Jim and Melissa Brady, Katie Irwin of the Irwins, Karen Peck Gooch of Karen Peck and New River, and Kim Hopper of the Hoppers. And the winner for Favorite Soprano 2020, Kim Hopper. the Lord for being so good to me and to my family um, and you know what I was sitting here thinking we've been off the road like everybody else for a long time and you out here you know you weathered the storm and you came to us when we couldn't come to you and that's what the Lord does so we thank you so much for uh, coming and participating today and just being a part and buying a ticket and helping all of us who've been off the road for quite a while. We thank you so, so much for your love and your, your generosity toward us. You are wonderful, wonderful fans. 
And I want to thank Singing News. How sweet of you to do this, continue to do this. I want to thank all the, the team that I work with. I work with a wonderful bunch of people. And Miss Connie, she is the queen. And I love her a lot. And I love this girl too. And she's been through quite a bit in her life. But God is bringing her through. And he is faithful. Don't forget that he is faithful. And he is a wonderful God. And I thank you so, so much. This means so much to me. And I know you keep voting year after year. And I totally understand you can vote for somebody else. It won't hurt my feelings at all. But this means a lot. Thank you so much. I love you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Here to uh, introduce the Young Artist of the Year is a trio from Indiana of Scott, Kelly, and their son, Garrett Roberts. Scott led worship in his home church for 20 years before taking the whole family on the road full time. And they represent the Fan Awards title sponsor this year, Child Fun, at events all around the country. Please make welcome Westward Road. Thank you so much, Lauren. We are so honored to be here today to introduce the nominee for Favorite Southern Gospel Young Artist of the Year on behalf of Child Fund International. Child Fund has been helping uh, children throughout the world for over 80 years uh, through spons child sponsorship. With your child sponsorship, um, these children will help receive the care that they need to break the cycle of poverty. Uh, with your sponsorship, they will receive things like education, health care, um, clean drinking water, and proper nutrition. And the best gift is that you can develop a relationship with your child. You can do that through letters, through uh, birthday gifts, through Christmas gifts, and you can even take a trip and meet your sponsored child. That's right. And Child Fund has been in operation for over 20, for over 80 years, but in over 25 countries around the world, including right here in the United States. And we encourage you, when this is over, go visit the Child Fund booth right beside the Singing News booth and uh, sponsor a child today. And now, the nominees for Favorite Young Artist of the Year are Autumn Neelan Clark of the Neelans, Trevor Conkle of Mark Trammell Quartet, Carrie Gooch of Karen Peck and New River, Kennedy Hayes of Mylon Hayes Family, and Ethan Wisnett of the Wisnets. And the winner is... Carrie, Carrie Gooch. Gooch. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I want to start out by thanking my family for letting me speak, or letting me speak, letting me sing on stage every night with the group. As you can tell, I never speak on stage. Um, um, I've always been very shy, and singing has always been a big deal for me, especially singing in front of people. Um, but I'm learning that the Lord keeps using me in the areas that I'm the weakest so that I have to rely on Him to get through it just like right now, because <laughs> um, when I'm weak, he is strong, and this has nothing to do with me and everything to do with the Lord using me or working through me each time I get on stage. So thank you so much. <laughs> She is a great girl, and I know one blonde mama that's probably over there squalling her eyes out right now. Here to perform, see, you can hear her over there. <laughs> Here to perform his nominated song is your favorite soloist over the year with Shame On Me, Joseph Habedank.
What is a legend? What is talent? Better yet, what lines connect the two? Is it just a piece of luck that carries a talented individual into a different company, or is it someone that chooses to rise above their circumstances? Above the chaos? The difference between Dottie and most people is, Dottie burned herself into me, into you, into everyone. The song was never about her. It was about us. It was about all of us. The song was and is the happiness, the sadness, the beginning and the end. Dottie is and was and will always be willpower and the desire to push things forward, always and forever. The Dottie Rambo Legacy Award. This is the first year that the Dottie Rambo Legacy Award has been presented, and to uh, announce the winner today is a special gentleman who traveled with the Grammy award-winning group, the Lanny Wolf Trio. He has worked with artists such as Amy Grant, Point of Grace, Karen Peck and New River, many others. He's currently the artist and label relations director at Daywin Records, and he's a longtime friend of the Dottie Rambo family. So this award is very special to him. It's very special, and Dusty has such a heart and has known Dottie for so long, and, uh, and I love how he's continuing today. One thing I, uh, I would truly say about Dusty is he is an encourager. Mm -hmm. uh, to the groups have been out there a long time, and to someone just started, he's an encourager. And will you help welcome Dusty Wells to the stage? Thank you, Tim and Lori. Man, it's hard to talk after that little video there. A lot of great memories. Um, Thank you, Singing News, when uh, Danny Jones, Rick Francis, and R Randy Miracle, when Randy called Reba and myself about this award, we were absolutely thrilled. Dottie Rambo lived what she sang, and she wrote about what she sang, and she sang and wrote what she lived. I know, I look out over this audience, and I know so many of you have sung her songs for years. Thirty some odd years ago, I was quite young, she took me to the first quartet convention that I ever went to at the Municipal Auditorium. And I absolutely was astounded at how much she loved the people and the people loved her, but she wanted to be right there down in the front watching the artists and supporting them. She was truly one of the greatest heroes and mentors of my life. I was a 14-year-old kid, lived in Twin Falls, Idaho. My mom had been married seven times and I was abused in every way possible. But one Saturday afternoon, a precious couple came out to the housing development there, and they were inviting kids to Sunday school on a church bus. And this precious couple came and knocked on my door, and they invited me to church. I didn't know anything about Jesus or church or music. I knew I loved the carpenters, and that was about it. But the first thing they did, they took me to their home on Sunday afternoons, and they didn't have a TV, but they'd put those long 33 records on and they'd play this lady with her hair up to here and that big long curl down over here. And they'd play that music over and over, Shelter in the Arms of God. Too much to gain to lose. Songs that you guys all still sing probably. And here it is, numerous, numerous years later and I got to spend over 25 years of my life traveling with them. God has been so faithful and good and on behalf of Reba, Destiny, Israel, Dion, and the entire Rambo and Latrell family. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So many of the nominees today, all of them, every one of them, I went through the list uh, when we first heard about it. They were all dear friends. Every one of them, I have a story from Dottie about them and what they've done to help her through the years. So the nominees for the Dottie Rambo Legacy Award are Wayne Hahn, Claude Hopper, Dottie Leonard Miller, Chris White, and Gerald Wolf. And the winner, well, every one of them are winners. I used to love it when people would say that. The Dottie Rambo Legacy Award. And she loved this man. She loved this man. Gerald Wolf.
I'm really uh, surprised, shocked. I remember the first person who uh, sent me a text and said, congratulations on being nominated for the Dottie Rambo Legacy Award. And I didn't know it existed. I didn't know what it was. So I sent a text to Dusty and said, what, what is this? And he explained it to me. And what an honor, you know. I, uh, my mom has a uh, recording of me when I was five years old singing Come Spring that Dottie wrote. I stood in a lonely room of a mother old and gray, her voice so weak she could hardly speak. I brushed a tear away. She was watching a little snowflake falling on a window pane. She breathed a sigh and then replied, I'll be gone to be with Jesus come spring. And I'll tell you the truth, this past spring, I wouldn't have minded being gone to be with Jesus. But this is indeed a real honor. Dottie was probably the greatest songwriter, lyricist to ever live, at least in our generation. And so I'm deeply honored, and I pray that uh, I would never do anything to um, damage her wonderful legacy. Thank you all. God bless. Congratulations, Gerald. That's awesome. Thank you, Dusty. Um, the, our next presenter is one of the most, I sound like Barney Five. Our next, our next presenter is one of the most prolific. I don't know. <laughs> When your voice does things you don't want it to, it's scary. Our next presenter is one of the most <laughs> prolific and award-winning songwriters in gospel music today. And so following up after, the, after, after this with, with, uh, uh, with, with, with Dottie, uh, uh, it's really neat to introduce this writer. Uh, she's the daughter of the legendary bass singer Ken Turner and the daughter-in-law of the famous country singer, the late Miss Dottie West. Uh, in the world of Christian music, she has had... Uh, over 96 Song of the Year nominations, including two this year, and she's won 25 times. Trivia, here's some trivia uh, about Kenna. She has never played drums for an opening show for Elvis before. <laughs> but, but you can read her article uh, uh, every month. It's called On the Shoulders of Giants. And she's a friend. She is our family. Uh, we love her. And she is your friend. What about it one time? Miss Kenna Turner West. Make her welcome to the Singing News Fan Awards. Well, one prayer has already been answered. I didn't fall on the way here. So that's, <laughs> this is, it makes you nervous. I'm not even kidding. Okay, as a young girl growing up in gospel music with my dad, being with the Palmetto State and, and the Dixie Echoes and the Blackwoods, I've always loved gospel music, and I particularly, I can't even say it, particularly loved mixed groups. I would play the records over and over. And I even had a Barbie doll named Sue Chenault. I really did. <laughs> and she knows that, too. So it's a privilege for me uh, to uh, read you the nominees and present the award to Favorite Mixed Group. And your nominees are the Collingsworth Family, the Hoppers, Karen Peck and New River, Mylon Hayes Family, and the Perrys. And your favorite Southern Gospel mixed group is. Look, I got to keep opening. The Collingsworth family. <laughs> Woo! You all have loved on the Collinsworth family over and over, and for that we say a huge thank you so much. Our kids are, are so involved with all of your kids, and there's a lot of love, and we appreciate it. Thank you very much for this, and thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to do this. Amen? 
One of the things I think that I, if I could just say to everybody is this year we have an unprecedented opportunity to show Jesus like we've never shown him before. And I think people need hope more than they've ever needed it in their lives. And so all of us, all of us artists, let's give them all the hope and all the Jesus that we can this year. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. I love them so much. Okay, now this is going to be one of my favorite categories, and you can probably guess what it is. This is for favorite bass. Now, I love bass singing, unless you're with my dad at the mall. He likes to hear himself sing. He still does. And we would walk through the mall, and his voice would just echo out, you know, and my sister and I would duck into a store and hide. But the older I get, the more wonderful my daddy is. And, uh, yeah, he's wonderful. So today, your nominees for favorite bass singer are Pat Barker of the Guardians, yeah. Eric Bennett of Triumphant Quartet, yeah. Randy Bird of the Mark Trammell Quartet, yeah. Jeff Chapman of the Kingdom Heirs, and Matt Fouch of Legacy Five. And your favorite Southern bass is Eric Bennett. Guys, thank you so much. I, I, I've got to be honest, I've never been more thankful to do what I do, um, I guess because of this year than I am right now. Um, I'm just uh, you know, blown away that I get the opportunity to sing gospel music. And I hope I never, ever take that for granted, uh, that I get to sing for a living. And I want to thank, uh, I want to thank God you know, for, the, for the time we've had off this year. I know that's kind of crazy, but I got to spend a lot of time with my family and my wife, and uh, I got to spend a lot of time with my wife. She's actually a nice lady, uh, so that's great. But um, I just am so thankful for uh, all the artists um, and uh, getting to hang out with you guys, kind of getting back on the road. Thankful for my team uh, of just wonderful guys that I get to sing with and travel with. And just most of all, thank God for allowing me again to do what I absolutely love doing more than anything, and that's singing to you guys. God bless you. Okay, I have one more very special thing to do, and this will require my readers. I can see anything above a 14 font, or I need these. Um, this is a special moment, and there is a young lady here and her name is Faith York, and I don't know where she is, but if she would come up here to me. Are you in here, Faith? Somewhere close. Come here. Y'all give her a hand, and I'm going to tell you why you're clapping. This year, between January and May, the 2020 Singing News Song Search was going on. It's a national contest. Come here by me, Angel. Uh, and so one of the grand prizes is that you get your song. Come over here in the middle, so we're all cute. They take a picture of us. You scared? Mm -hmm. I am too, it's all good. <laughs> and right in the middle of being nervous, I'll have a hot flash and I'll forget my zip code. <laughs> it's gotta be better than that. It's okay, you good? I got you, girl. So the grand prize, one of the grand prize uh, awards that you get is a song is gonna be recorded by 11th Hour. Well, that happened. And who all was here Tuesday night? Were you here Tuesday night? Well, what's great is the writer of the winning song is standing right here next to me right now. Now, watch this. My notes tell me a lot. They don't tell me the name of the song. What's the name of your song? He Proves Me Wrong. He Proves Me Wrong. Tuesday night in this room was the debut of that song, and we captured it on video just for this moment right here. Would you watch this?
That's a beautiful song. We have said goodbye this year to many fellow artists and people in the gospel music industry that we have loved for a long time. And although they're no longer with us, they will never be far from our hearts and our memories. Uh, just in the past week, uh, we said uh, goodbye to Mr. John Hall, but you knew him as Big John Hall. And uh, his big booming voice is no doubt adding, uh, adding a new depth to the heavenly choir. And so Singing News has prepared a special tribute to those that we've said goodbye to from this time last year up until September the 1st. If you would please watch the video and help us remember those that we've loved. You know, uh, and I think one of the greatest things that we can do, so many of those uh, fine people we, we worked with so many times, especially you artists that worked with them, and I think one of the greatest things we could do now is, is to continue to pray for their families. Because uh, I love awards like this when, when the artists can feel the love and, and feel they're on the right track and all this is so good, but man, that list right there, they've already received the, the greatest award that can ever be. And so uh, let's pray for their families. Oh, let me get going. And y'all brought up, a baby is not supposed to follow something like that. Okay, be funny, but right after the memorial video. Whew. Okay, uh, all I know is, uh, all I know is that I, I checked on Josh during this downtime when March hit to see if he was doing okay, and I, I found out that he was uh, manufacturing and selling hand sanitizer. He's making himself. I asked him how he's doing, and he said it's just it's it's out of battery acid and goat milk. But anyway, uh, we, we appreciate what you've been doing, and keep up the good work, and don't forget it. Thank you. <laughs> that boy right there needs medication more than anybody I've ever seen. Okay. <laughs> oh, this year, uh, 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 the, the guy we're going to celebrate now, he's, uh, he has been um, in radio broadcasting for 30 years, celebrating this year. Uh, you can hear him every weekday on the Singing News uh, radio network. Um, he has that great voice, commanding voice, not like Barney Five. He has a great commanding voice. And uh, he also is the host of the Singing News Top 20 Weekly Countdown, which is heard on 140 stations across the country. And he's a great friend to gospel music. What about it, Mr. Rodney Balkum? Make him welcome. Come on, Rodney.
Thank you, Tim. Well, everyone knows that the favorite part in a male quartet is the baritone part. <laughs> the guys took up a collection and paid me to say that. I got $5 total. And the five nominees are Lauren Harris from the Kingdom Heirs. Scotty Enman from the Triumphant Quartet. Paul Lancaster from the Booth Brothers. Josh Singletary from the Tribute Quartet. And Mark Trammell from the Mark Trammell Quartet. And the favorite Southern Gospel baritone is Mark Trammell. It's reward enough that we're in this building together. Too many miles behind me, too many trials are through. Too many tears, they help me to remember that there is too much to gain, to lose. God bless you. I love you. Thank you. Amen. One of my heroes right there. All right, everybody knows that the favorite part in a male quartet is the lead position. <laughs> the nominees in this category paid me. They took up a collection to say that. I got $4 total. Somebody still owes me. The five nominees are Ronnie Booth from the Booth Brothers. Jim Brady from Jim and Melissa Brady. Ronnie Rodney Griffin from Greater Vision. I should know how to say Rodney, that's my name. Clayton Inman from the Triumphant Quartet. And Arthur Rice from the Kingdom Heirs. And the favorite Southern Gospel lead singer is Ronnie Booth from the Booth Brothers. I've been looking for Ronnie, but I don't think that he's here today. So I'll just go ahead and um, Ronnie's here. Where? You're looking at him. <sighs> Thank y'all so much for this war. Uh, yeah, sure. You know, uh, <laughs> Thank y'all, uh, you know, uh, okay. you know, uh, I have a couple announcements to make. Uh, Everybody feels sorry for me having Michael as my uh, brother, but uh, it's taking a long time, but through all this pandemic, I got to get this out and go ahead and tell the truth. He's not my brother. He showed up with a lot of, uh, and one more thing. I know I, won I know I won the award a lot, but it still feel fine after all these years.
Danny, I want to raise. <laughs> I don't know of a more perfect message for the times that we're living in than the next song sung by the tribute quartet, The Healer Hasn't Lost His Touch. Make them welcome. Great job, guys. Our next presenter is one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. As a matter of fact, when I was five years old, I wanted to be her because she could sing high and she had great big blonde hair just teased up to Jesus. I mean, it was fabulous. And uh, she's just, she's a friend to everybody that she meets. She is the leader and soprano of Karen Peck and New River. In addition to singing and songwriting, she co-hosts a national weekly Southern Gospel Music TV show with Mike LeFevre and Danny Jones called Gospel Music USA. And she was the winner of the Fan Award for, for Favorite Soprano for 11 consecutive years from 1985 to 1996, and she's still just as amazing today. Would you welcome Karen Peck Gooch? Thank you, Lauren. That is so sweet. Lauren is such a great example to our, especially to our young people, to my daughter. And I'm still sitting over there crying over my baby girl. I'm still not over it. And to, um, anyway, I'm a proud mama here today. And um, Kim, I know you are too, your baby girl. Isn't Lexi doing a great job? Well, um, I am so honored to be here to present the favorite tenor, uh, the nominees for the favorite tenor, tenor for the Southern, I mean, excuse me, the Singing Nice Fan Awards are Chris Allman, Greater Vision, Michael Booth, the Booth Brothers, Brian Free, Brian Free and Assurance, Ernie Haas of Ernie Haas and Signature Sound. David Sutton of Triumphant Quartet. And the Singing News Fan Award for Favorite Tenor is... I didn't get a drum roll. Thank you. Chris Allman, Greater Vision. Thank you so much uh, for all of you who would take the time to vote for me. You know, last night I sat back here behind the curtain and listened as all of the groups came across. And uh, so often, being a part of this music, you, you tend to stay on the uh, peripheral, if you will, you know, just out there talking to people and, uh, because you've heard it. You, you understand what I'm saying? But last night I sat there and I listened and uh, heard as every one of the groups came across, and I'll just have to say, I've never been prouder in my life uh, to be a part of this great gospel music. Uh, I've wanted to sing it since I was nine years old, 51 now, and uh, all of these tenors, you know, the five guys on the screen, uh, they all deserve uh, this award, as well as all of those who, you, who you've seen sing today. Steve Ladd blew me away. Uh, what an awesome singer. Jay Parrick back on the road. Uh, so, so thrilled to see that. Excited me last night. Uh, uh, Riley, you blessed me, and if you would just wait on it, you'd get it for free, by the way. <laughs> right? Okay, and now if you're going to play bump music, could you play something like, no, 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 unforgettable, that's what you are, right? because Kimberly, my wife, what a supporter. 
And uh, as have already, been, you know, it's already been joked today that it's hard for them to watch us leave so often and to stay gone. And uh, but they stay there. They support us. It's the reason we can do what we can do uh, is because of them. But this year, uh, much like Eric, uh, his wife, my wife is very nice, and uh, it has been a joy to spend extra time with you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That is great. Well, the nominees for the favorite Southern Gospel album of the year are Everything in Between the Kingdom Heirs. Pure Love, Legacy Five. Victory Shout, The Kingsman. Yes, Triumphant Quartet. You've Arrived, Greater Vision. And the favorite Southern Gospel album of the year is Oh, wow. Yes, Triumphant Quartet. Thank you all so much. Uh, albums are how we share uh, the message to everyone. We, uh, we're not, I'm not a preacher. Uh, I try to sing, we try to sing, and um, albums are a way that, like I said, we share what we want to say uh, to the audience. And, and Gordon Moat and Wayne Hahn just poured their hearts producing this album. And Stowtown Records did an amazing job of getting it out to everyone. And uh, thank you for the feedback. The feedback has been amazing. So many testimonies of how uh, this album has reached families. Um, grandparents taking the album home, playing it for their grandkids, and the grandkids coming with the grandparents and the parents to concerts. Let's get back to worshiping together and making music we can all worship to. Thank you so much for this. We love you. That's awesome. Congratulations, guys. Um, and this uh, next presenter, it's, uh, you know, you always say like it's a real honor, and it is uh, any time you introduce someone, but this is especially uh, a great honor for me to introduce this person. Um, uh, she has been gospel music so long, and we all love her. Uh, I was saying to Lauren earlier about Connie, I said, everybody loves Connie. And I said, I don't know anybody that doesn't love her. And, and Lauren said, if they did, they would be wrong. And, uh, uh, and she has a one, f I, I could stand here for two hours and read just awards, Marvin Norcross Award, 1998. Uh, she's been in so many multiple Hall of Fames. Uh, she was into the Southern Gospel Hall of Fame in 2010. Uh, tons of number one songs, sung literally all over the world. And um, written uh, Connie's Corner and Singing News Magazine for over 36 years. But the greatest thing for everyone who knows Connie is that she is Connie. She takes time to talk to people. She takes time to encourage someone. Um, the promoter of an event is no more important than a six-year-old child looking up at her wanting to talk to her about something. Everybody's on equal playing ground. She carries Jesus with her no matter where she goes. And I think it was just one of the last articles singing news when they were uh, interviewing Kim and Kim, when they asked the person you most admire. And when you travel on the road and you're tired and miles after miles, and when Kim said, my mother-in-law, that tells you something. And her heart for people is so genuine and she really is an icon folks and we need 
to give her a special welcome, Miss Connie Hopper. I don't really think I deserve all that, Tim. I got a phone that rings just like that, and they get to me on the bus and say, turn that phone off. I tell them it might be somebody really important calling, so you go ahead, whoever that was, and answer your phone over there. It was a book, and I'm going to take it. <laughs> okay. You know what? You just don't know how important you people are. I've been doing this for so long, and uh, never get tired of it. Sometimes I get tired, but I'll tell you what, when I get here and we get to singing or I get to listening to some of these great groups, I don't know, singing is important in our lives. You know, if you're just in the kitchen and you're down, sing you a gospel song. It'll change your life. I know that because uh, I've been there. And I'm supposed to... Introduce some folks here. No, I, I could have messed it up. All right. Let me turn it around here. It's in here. Gospel music is important. Songs are important. I've heard a lot of songs in the 60 years I've been doing this, and uh, I've heard songs that I know can reach a person and change a life. And that's what it's all about. And find me the category. Which category are we the on? Songwriter. The songwriter. I, I goofed it up then. Which, which category is it? Songwriter. Favorite songwriter. Songwriter. That's it. So, songwriter, songwriter. Okay. <laughs> you have Connie Hopper and Connie Hopper and Connie Hopper. <laughs> Hey, this is it. Uh, uh, favorite. Oh, I got it. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Well, keep that other one so I'll okay. know. Okay, all right. Okay, just make, make it up and Cla we'll do it. Claude does all the keeping up with these papers. I, I don't, I've never done that much, but anyway. Favorite songwriters. The nominees are Lee Black, <laughs> Rodney Griffin. Joseph Haberdank, Scotty Enman, and Diane Wilkinson. Okay, did I find it? Did I lose it? That's not it. <laughs> okay, don't leave. I got to have your help. <laughs> How about it for Rodney Griffin? Thank you, Connie, and, uh, while, and Tim, <laughs> and everyone involved. Uh, sometimes it's hard to uh, find words to just show how grateful you are. Um, but I guess since I'm a songwriter, I'll just stand here and make something up. <laughs> One thing that we don't have to make up is uh, this wonderful message we have is something we'll never exhaust. So the writers you saw up there, so more deserving than me, writers that you don't even know their faces to their name, uh, they're walking around here, so much more deserving than me. But uh, together, if we all, all write every day, we still will never exhaust the cross. So whether you're a preacher, teacher, writer, just keep it up. We will never fathom this God of infinite mercy and grace. 
So let's keep writing, singing, and serving him. All right? Love you. Thank you. The next uh, would be like for the favorite Southern Gospel Quartet. And uh, when I got into this music, the Hopper Brothers were a quartet. And uh, so I've always enjoyed the quartets. And at one point in time, there was not a lot of uh, ladies in the gospel music industry, but I'm glad that they let us in, so I'm glad to be here. <laughs> but I love, I love a good gospel quartet, and you've picked out some great ones. Ernie Haas and Signature Sound. The Kingdom Heirs. Mark Trammell Quartet. Tribute Quartet. And Triumph Quartet. I see my son Dean looking at me saying, Mama, won't you get it together? <laughs> hey. How about it for Triumph and Quartet? just say on behalf of, uh, I'll speak for all these guys here. First of all, I just want to, we want to say thank you to our Heavenly Father um, for blessing this group and blessing our families the way he has over the past 18 years. Um, we want to thank our beautiful wives, our kids, our grandkids, to a couple of these guys up here now for allowing us to go out every week and share the gospel through song because it's what we love to do. We want to thank all of you sitting out there, all the ones that are watching live stream today and all the artists around this stage. You guys have shown us so much love over the past 18 years of our ministry and we can't thank you enough for it. We love you. We just ask that you continue to pray for us, and we'll continue to pray for you. God bless you. We love you. Thank you. If I ever do this again, I'll rehearse. I'll practice. I've never done this. I'm supposed to introduce a song by a great group that I haven't heard since last year. You know, we haven't heard many groups, but they sing this good. What Kind of Man by Legacy Five. that song. I do too. We're almost to the end, Tim. Yes. And I just want to say I'm just so glad that we've had this time together. I'm just to... so glad we had this time. And I'm, and I'm really sorry I messed up a Connie up here. You should see it up here, folks. There's 5,000 things, and so I'll take full responsibility, but I don't really care because it's not going to make me feel bad because I never thought a comedian would win lead singer of the year. So go right ahead. I'm just gonna go ahead and recognize the people we need to recognize right now. <laughs> the young lady who has been bringing the trophies across the stage tonight, our fan award girl, she's the daughter of Dean and Kim Hopper and the granddaughter of Claude and Connie. How about a nice hand for Miss Lexi Hopper? Good 
Didn't she do a didn't she do a phenomenal job? And and I tell you else, uh, uh, a lot of times they're unsung heroes, but I love the band. What about it one time? A leader of the band over there, Josh Singletary, and, we, we, and then we got father and son right over here. And 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 and, and, and yeah, okay. On guitar, Roger and Eli Fortner, formerly of the McCameys. You're welcome. And, we have the, uh, yeah. and on the drums, how about it for Mr. Dennis Murphy? <laughs> Last but not least, none of this would have been possible if it were not for two hardworking gentlemen at the Singing News Magazine, Mr. Danny Jones and Mr. Rick Francis. We appreciate them so very much. Stand up, Danny. I think that's him behind that mask anyway. Okay, one of the awards we've all been waiting for, the favorite song of the year. Yes, and uh, we can trade out some if you want to. This is kind of long, we've got all the uh, uh, writers' names on there, but the first one is Come Sunday Morning, The Old Paths, written by Kenner Turner West and Jason Cox. Going There by the Triumphant Quartet, written by Scotty Inman and Lee Black. Shame on Me, Joseph Habedank, written by Michael Boggs, Jason Cox, and Joseph Habedank. The Healer Hasn't Lost His Touch by Tribute Quartet, written by Jason Cox, Joseph Habedank, and Tony Wood. What Kind of Man, Legacy 5, written by Sue C. Smith, Kenner Turner West, and Jason Cox. Man, Jason Cox is clean up. And the winner is... Go in there, Triumphant Quartet. Thank you all so much for this. Um, I'm not going to take any more time. I'm going to introduce you to a songwriter that you've gotten to know over the last year that's incredible. Uh, he's written many of your favorite songs, and he's one of my good friends and the co-writer of this song, Mr. Lee Black. Come on. Yeah. Well, thank you all. Thank you, Singing News. Thank you, Triumphant. Thank you, Scotty, for letting me come in on a great song. Uh, just a, a, his idea and he let me be a part of it. This has only happened to me twice. I don't know if it'll happen again. I wasn't here the first time, and ironically, that was a song called Amazing God, sung by Triumphant. So, uh, songwriters, get your songs recorded by Triumphant Quartet. Um, <laughs> I want to thank uh, Scott Fowler for uh, a great year, a great platform. Uh, my wife, who has loved me selflessly, chasing a songwriter dream for years, and a great publisher. That's uh, Rick Shelton at Daywood Music Publishing. Thank y'all very, very much. That was awesome, congratulations. And now to the final category, the favorite artist of the year. Is everybody still doing good out there? All right, all right. Okay, uh, favorite artist of the year, man. The Booth Brothers, Collinsworth Family, Greater Vision, Kingdom Heirs, Triumphant Quartet. And the 2020 Artist of the Year. What a surprise, the Triumphant Quartet.
Honestly, I, I'm just overwhelmed. I, we, I mean, um, everybody, every, every artist in that category and, and every other artist out here and group and trio and solo or whatever, it's just our friends and, and we're very thankful for them and everybody deserves it. Um, uh, you know, guys, I just, I, I'll never get over this. I mean, I just, I, I, I'm just so humbled by it. Um, you know, we, we, just like everybody else, we leave our families and, and do what God, we feel like God wants us to do. And, and, uh, he's just, he, he's blessed us and we're just so thankful for it. Um, thank you. Thank you for allowing us to do what we do. And, and, uh, thank you for, uh, voting for, for us. We're just, I, I'm just overwhelmed. God bless you. Thank you. That is so wonderful. Well, you know, we, we made it through this, and for everybody watching, uh, maybe streaming online for all of you, uh, you know, these are different times for everybody. Uh, somebody said when all this first started, man, everything seems abnormal. I said, welcome to my life. Yeah. But the deal is, sometimes the new normal and the new is the new abnormal, but here's what is so wonderful. We that know Christ... It's not just words we say. If you're sitting at home and maybe you're all alone, I want you to get a hold of this and really believe it. Greater is he that is within us than anything that's on the evening news. Christ is victorious. It has been awesome. I appreciate the singing news for all that they have done for, and uh, just for everyone and for all the winners. How about one more hand for my lovely co-host, Mr. Tim Lovelace. What about it for Lauren Talley? Let's hear it one time. You've been a wonderful audience this afternoon. God bless you. We love you. Thank you so much.